I've always wanted to visit a glacier. Since the dream of this trip arose, I thought it would be in Patagonia, not right here, near the equator, in Colombia. Getting to the northern tip of the Andes to see Colombia's last and only glacier would be a test and challenge of its own. From our location, we're about 225 kilometers away, and the road looks insane. We know it's going to be an adventure just to reach the national park. If driving the longest road in the world wasn't enough, give yourself 100 days to build a 4x4 motorhome capable of such a task. 40,000 miles crossing every type of terrain imaginable through some of the most feared and remote regions on Earth. Just for something to do? No. For something to write books about. Something to relish in the aliveness of living on the edge of the unknown insanity. Something to radically expand our perspective of what the world is actually like and what is possible within one lifetime. I'm Matthew. And I'm Stacy. And this is Toyota World Runners. Proudly presented by West Can Overland, off-road and design. All right, well, I don't know what we're in for, but this is going to be an adventure just to get to the glacier. Yeah. And then we get to see Columbia's only glacier. I've actually never seen a glacier, so, wow. This is, it, does, it just doesn't stop. This is crazy. Wow. Eight yeah. hours. It says eight hours. I'm I'm gonna guess it's gonna be more like twelve to sixteen. <laughs> yeah. On the road again <laughs> and feeling good. We've, uh, as you saw in the last video, we've had a little bit of a rough start to our Colombian adventure, but we're excited. We're excited to finally just be going camping. <laughs> yep. So. And escape the oven. Yeah. And we've got beautiful weather. It's sunny. It's cool. Yeah. And we have an adventurous road to explore to a place here, so it's just... We're excited. Feeling good. For the next 200 and something kilometers, there wouldn't be a straight stretch of road for more than a few hundred meters. Curves so crazy, you'd think they would tie you in a knot. And roads so steep, you'd think they were made for goats. This is the road to El Cucuy National Park. Making the road better. Love to see it. Before an international overland trip begins, you think it might be marked by the destinations. But in fact, it's remembered by the least expected surprises found throughout the in-between. This adventure is a lot of the in-between. This cloud forest is amazing. This road has literally been carved into the side of the cliff. 
Every few kilometers, a colorful assortment of sheet metal, wood, clay, and plants will be hanging precariously off a cliff. We discuss this life on a hill often. The idea that everything is either uphill or downhill, and the stability of your livelihood relies on how Mother Nature is feeling that day. A life so different than our own, but one so interesting to observe. Fowl. <laughs> yeah, let's go up here. Let's see if we can maybe find a camp spot right there. <laughs> oh, yes. Chili camp. It is chilly. We're camping at 3,000 meters right now. It's gonna be cold. <laughs> we like cold. Argentinian chorizo. Exciting. Okay, so we moved inside because it's a little drizzly, but you know. <laughs> Fruit roulette, everyone. Can't remember what this one's called, but this is a new fruit to us. We're excited. Kind of looks like a dragon fruit, a yellow dragon fruit. And we're just gonna wing it. dark on the inside. It looks kind of like a dragon fruit. It smells like a dragon fruit. Okay. Yellow dragon fruit. Let's, uh, let's see we'll what we'll just cut it in half, I guess. Yeah, maybe scoop it out with a spoon. Ooh! Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> We're good. Way sweeter than a dragon fruit. Dragon fruit's kind of weird because it, like, it looks so fantastical, but it, it's not that exciting. <laughs> the flavor doesn't match the look. This one's kind of the opposite. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's delicious. It's got such a fun gelatin texture, too. <laughs> yeah. All right, day two on our adventure to El Cucuy. We still have about 100 and, I think it was 170 ish kilometers left, with a couple stops on the way. I think we may have lost our map, but we have offline maps, so. <laughs> yep. 
Yes, there will be a lot of mountain passes. We're going to be going up from 3,000 meters to 4,600 meters. Crazy. I think this is the first time in many, many months when we haven't immediately put our windows down. <laughs> Bye, sheep. We're definitely in coffee country. One of our favorite distinctions to these crazy mountain routes is the perfectly groomed towns seemingly in the middle of nowhere, just when you think you're as remote as it gets. To us, even through the windshield, this is where we can get a taste of the culture and the lifestyle of these rural areas. The farmers that are up early and drinking beers in the afternoon the smiling ladies in the panaderias making bread and other treats, and the kids laughing and playing at all hours of the day. Another notable thing about mountain routes in Latin America is the locals will always go faster than you, no matter what they drive. Even if that's a full-size tour bus, then you better get out of the way for that one. Slow going, but we're making our way there. Yep. It is time for lunch. It's time for lunch. What's the best thing about a big pot, you might ask? You get two meals for the price of one. Yep. Pasta again. Mmm. And watermelon. <laughs> we're going up here. You can tell the locals take a lot of pride in how things look around here, especially the churches. We learned later that there's actually a competition for whose town is the best kept. If you're enjoying this content, please smash that like button and consider subscribing if you're not already. It's free and it really does help us out. continued we witnessed the landscape change again from the steep jungled cloud forest into this dry desert valley. Hey, we're airing down
down again after just airing up. <laughs> there was like this little section of highway for like, I don't know, like eight, 10 kilometers. So we aired up and it's dirt road again. And also Matthew has an admirer. Oh, hello. Wow. Quite the heifer. Yeah. Man, she's got triplets in there. Look, she likes you. Hello. Do you have a central entire a central tire inflation system in there? We are chasing storm. Landslides frequent this area, and about 10 kilometers ahead of us, we read that the road might be washed out. Not wanting to get stuck in the storm or become a casualty of this dirt highway, we needed to pick up the pace. He just bumped the awning, just like lightly nudged the awning. Wow. Wow, that was about as close as it gets, literally. Cowboy once told us that ice is the most powerful force on earth. Seeing how millions of years of frozen water has moved and shaped this landscape, I think he was right. Do you have any comments about our camp spot? It was nice, it was peaceful. There was an ant on me in the middle of the night, but I won't let that get me down. Okay, day three, <laughs> glacier hunting. <laughs> oh man. Will they get there? Does it actually exist? Is this all cap? We, we <laughs> will find glacier today. All right, cool. Well, we're gonna do an early start. It's uh, 6.30 and I think we should definitely leave before the uh, school kids come to our really glamorous camp spot. Yeah. <laughs> Wake up and bounce. <laughs>
wake up and bounce. Here is where the road had been washed out a few weeks earlier. Thankfully, it's been repaired. Sometimes we French, sometimes we arrow, but we always press. <laughs> Ground the beans real fine today. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> See so that coffee art? You wanna know the best part about arrow pressing outside? Planting coffee ground trees. Oh, that almost wasn't as good as the first one. As the elevation was increasing once again, our windows went up, the air went cooler, and we could tell we were finally getting close. Okay, so we are finally in the town of Elk Koi, and we have to go get a permit for the national park and we're gonna go talk to someone about guiding a hike for us because we need to stretch our legs and you need a guide for all the hikes up here. So we're gonna go do that. Hola, buenos dias. Hola. Do you have no inglés o solo español? Español, okay, todo bien. Uh, yo necesito dos uh, paseos de uh, parque. Uh, sí, para mañana. ¿Ya tiene guía? Uh, no. So we have to pick one of these guys. <laughs> ah, says you. Guía profesional. Mañana. Okay. Sí, él. Okay, so apparently you have to get a guide first to register to get a park pass. Yeah. This information was not present in any of the information that we read, so. We messaged our guide and now we're waiting to hear back. Mm -hmm. 
Pues para mí, ¿no? Para mí estuvo como un poquito. Para la coca. Okay, so that was intense. That's a lot of effort. But we um we're stocked. Yep, we got coca leaves, we got a guide, we got our registration. <laughs> we have lots of knowledge. Yeah. We're heading into the mountains. <laughs> Island cows. Cheese. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Why are you chasing it? Who's chasing it? Oh, that's a female. Oh. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, don't mind us. You do your business. Man, male turkeys are hilarious. How they just walk around with their feathers displayed like that. Yeah. Oh. Oh, guys. Oh. oh. Show us the way. Do you feel weird? Mm -hmm. Guess we're going to try chewing on one of these. My head just feels so. Odd. First coca leaf ever. I think Earthy. You, I think you gotta take a few more and then make like a ball in the corner of your mouth. having altitude problems. <laughs> That's insane. Oh my god, this... The pen exploded. Careful. I, can't, I don't even know if I should... Oh. Oh. Oh, that poor guy. <laughs> Balloon chippies. <laughs> we should... <laughs> oh no. Nice. <laughs> Chips. Okay, so we don't really have the zoom lens to do this justice, <laughs> but that's Columbia's only glacier with the full moon rising next to it. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. Dang, that is freaking cool. <laughs> Look at it go. Oh my god, it's rising so quickly. That is awesome. Wow. So there's a couple glaciers. There's another one that's right there, which you can't really see. And but, then we're hiking oh, oh. over <laughs> there, yeah, Yes, we're actually hiking like kind of right where the, where the moon is and then over towards the glacier. Yeah, wow, that is special, magical. And you can hear all the birds out. Yeah, this is a really cool camp. It is freezing. It's really cool. <laughs> but it is stunning. Wow, like... Trailhead, waiting for Sergio. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go park now. First. Colombia is working hard to increase its tourism industry. There used to be a six day trek through the east side of this park, but due to complications we learned about between the indigenous and the government wanting to restore the land, it's no longer open. Additionally, these are the fastest melting glaciers on earth. So if you want to see them, now's the time. 
Hola, hola. Hola. Mi nombre es Mateo. Gracias, mucho gusto. Gracias. So you manage here this place for uh, breakfast, uh, uh, lunch in the in the during the um, ah, we're at the end yeah, of the hike. Cool. They are trying hard with the tourism. Okay. Because the um, activities before, mm -hmm. like agriculture and animal husbandry, mm -hmm. is not anymore in this area. Uh, right. Uh, coffee. In the way. Sí. I mean. Sí. Sí. Yeah. Sí. Ah, muchas gracias. Y el mono, sí. Sí, el negro es perfecto. Solo el negro fue. Se lo estuve ayer. All right, we're beginning. I don't have a headache or anything yet. This is almost just like a prevention thing. Plus, it feels cultural. <laughs> it's ceremonious. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, don't waste them. No. Get back here. Today we're hiking El Popito del Diablo. We read it's a ten and a half kilometer hike and should take about five hours. How's your it's good. Are they working? Oh yeah. Nice. That's what we read. So that the plant filters the water. Si. And what's the name again? Fraile Juan. Like for mm. It's called Senecio, is the name. It's really pretty. See? It? Spiders, mm -hmm. uh, lizards. Mm -hmm. So we can say the frailejon is our micro ecosystem. Yeah, it's it's just the plant place. itself. Exactly. That's so cool. <laughs> so the rocks start to become erosion yeah. and let in the ground uh, minerals mm -hmm. like iron, like potassium, and everything. And when the soil is, is ready, full of nutrients, the plants start to uh, colonize, wow. colonize the valley. <coughs> so uh, up there, we will see the process. Here is already the valley. Yeah. There is some other ecosystem called a turbera. Okay. And then up, we will see the lake. Cool. Right, so hollow inside, so that's how it filters the water. <coughs> the people before use it to build houses. So is one fraglejon complete like this, pull down, and then the other fraglejon over the other, and Wow. And that's the way to build the wall, and then to build the houses. <laughs> it's very impressive how the fraglejon and the decomposition is super slow. Mm. Super slow. We can find houses made like 50 years ago. Wow. Wow. Feeling it now. We're like, I know, like somewhere around 4,500 meters. Yeah, there's definitely a lack of oxygen. There's a lot less oxygen here. It's, it's gnarly. It's not even, it's just like, you can never catch your breath.
tastes like home. All the way up and over that. What is it used for? What do you know? Um, I've used it, it's used in like home homeopathics a lot in Canada. Um, but for like colds and just like common sicknesses. Many things. Yeah. Homeopathic, you say? So that, that's oh. Arnica. See, Arnica Amarilla. And we have a purple. Five kilometers of sea level. This is awesome now. Ah, look at the David of the pulpito. Back at the river, Sergio let us know it would be the last place to fill up water for the next four hours. And that's when it dawned on us that our ten and a half kilometer, five hour hike was just one way and we were in for double that at almost 5,000 meters of elevation. This has quickly become the hardest hike that we have ever done. This is crazy. This is definitely one of the hardest things we've ever done. <laughs> This very unique square emerging from the glacier is known as the Pulpito del Diablo. Join inside, the, then get the back, then the shoulder, and then to reach the summit. The summit is 5,100 feet. It feels like a great accomplishment to have reached this point but it also means that our hike is only halfway complete. Yeah, and we're choosing to stay here another night because we can't get over the views. <laughs> I mean, come on, right? Dang. It's stunning here. Yep. The morning views of glaciers. And you can see where we hiked yesterday. Yeah, you can see it real clearly. So that's the tallest one right there. And then we hiked to the square. That one. The Devil's Pulpit, or as the indigenous would call it, the Temple of the Sun. Interesting how Catholicism kind of flipped the script on that one. El Cucuy feels like a hidden gem of Colombia. The route to get here from the west is worth the time alone. It's the first glacier we've been to, and it exceeded our expectations, especially the difficulty of the trek in the altitude. This country is full of surprises and amazing things to discover, 
for us, that's exactly what we're here to experience. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and that we've earned your subscription. For behind-the-scenes content and real-time updates, join us on Patreon. As always, thank you for being here. We'll see you next time.